That was incredible. Thank Stunning. You. I don't know what to say. Breathtaking? What are words? I'm still searching for my own words. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel extra privileged to be able to chat with you here on Billboard Live um, yes. in New York here because we're like eight hours away, just after 4 p.m. here in New York, from the record being out. I know. Out. How nuts is that? I actually do have to stay up till midnight tonight because I think when that midnight hits, it's going to be like a whole new new year. Seven years since making my first record. That's a long time. Does it feel like Christmas Eve? If, yeah, it feels like Christmas Eve, like I'm about to turn 21 again and all that good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine the excitement. But actually, if you could put it into words uh, for the fans watching right now, what does it kind of feel like? Seven years, that's a long time. You must be an entirely different person now than you were yeah, last year. Yeah, definitely. It's a very different person from where I was seven years. I mean, I have two young kids. Well, when I first made The Ghost Who Walks, my kids weren't even in school. And now they're my daughter's in middle school and all that stuff. Yeah. So they're going to have an opinion on this record. Oh, they do have opinions <laughs> on They think my music's really dark. My daughter constantly asks me, like, why does it have to be so depressing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe another record. I'll make a more positive one. Who knows? <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so you're doing these shows leading up to the record, and I yes. want to get to the record. I love the name of it, Double Roses. Double Roses. It's the name of a Sam Shepard poem in his book Motel Chronicles. And always these things have strange, esoterical, bizarre meanings. And people have asked me a lot what music has inspired this record. And I mean, I'm always listening to music, but it was more... Uh, more subtle things that were inspiring this record. And I read that poem, and I know it sounds a little bit pretentious, but I've always had a crush on Sam Shepard anyway. So it just meant... I, don't, I can't explain what it meant to me, but I knew that my record had to be called Double Roses, yes. And is it true you actually reached out through a friend of a friend Actually, to my Sam? friend Jackson, who was playing guitar with me, um, oh, I always feel... He doesn't like when I say this, but his mother's Patty Smith. Okay. And obviously, Patty was down in... Um, Nashville as and I'd made the record and I wanted to call it Double Roses and I'm speaking the double, his poem at the end of Double Roses and I asked Jackson what to do and he said well let me call my mom and ask her and I was going to her book reading so she was like write him Sam Shepard a letter give it to me and I'll give it to him and that's how it all worked out that's beautiful this whole record has been a series of really wonderful coincidences that have sort of um, over the course of seven years have uh, kind of all magically got together but it was interesting because none of it sort of was planned that way at all right you talk about inspiration and you know normally when, a, when an artist or a group or a band they get in the studio to record a record you know maybe it's over three weeks or a yeah. year to sort of like you know have life experiences you have yeah. seven years yeah. to sort of draw inspiration from yeah. what were the overarching uh themes or or notions that you did draw well, from for this record i think you know i mean i'm 38 years old i'm no spring chicken anymore but i think there's a certain point Maybe it's a sort of very female perspective, you know, but as a woman, I've seen a lot. I've lived a lot. I've, you know, those who don't know, as a, I've been a model for over 20 years. I left home when I was 15, but I've lived a very strange, a quite unusual life, and now I live in Nashville, Tennessee. So there was just, you know, what inspires anything. You just sort of live, and writing songs has always been my way of sort of processing stuff and making sense of my life and I do think this record is really sort of a I think coming of age is the wrong wrong expression it's sort of coming into myself this record I felt like I had a lot of things to kind of contend with and I sort of you know there's a lot of water imagery in this record as well it's almost like I felt like I was swimming through sort of treacherous oceans to get through to the karma side. So that's really what it represents, yeah. yeah. Is this the truest self you've ever sort of put forth on a, a piece of music? I think so. I mean, obviously with my first record, The Ghost Who Walks, I was still sort of, you know, I'm a strange bird. I take my time on these things. And I, I think with The Ghost Who Walks, I wrote the songs and within like the next day went into the studio and recorded them because obviously, you know, my ex-husband is Jack White and he knew that there was no way... You know, I, I'm uh, chronically hard on myself. So he knew in order to just to get me in the studio, I, couldn't, I didn't have enough time to think. So just throw me into that situation. But with this record, obviously seven years is a long time, right? So I had a lot of time to write a ton of songs and really dig deep. I realized with this record, it's the classic second record thing. Like how can you break the mold? Like the artists that I like really change, transform themselves in each and every record. And I knew the songs that I connect to are very sort of, you know, universal themes of life. And I realized I had to dig deep into those themes because that's the stuff that, you know, moves me ultimately. And I wanted to sort of, you know, 
try as hard as I could, yeah. Absolutely. And something you, that I thought was really cool you told me before we went live yeah. is that this, you know, it's been seven years, but it wasn't like seven years and you wrote all, all this material, you know, yeah. in three months. Yeah. You were telling me there's songs from six years ago yeah, that yeah. you wrote six years ago that yeah. actually wound up on the record. Yeah, there's um, Wander Blind, which is the first song of the record, and Helen Highwater. Um, I recorded demos of those years and years ago, and then the last song, Distant Shore, was the one I wrote literally hours before I got on the plane before going to record the record. And really? I mean, I've written a ton of songs, even for this record, we recorded probably 23. And, you know, again, because it's been seven years, it felt a little bit egotistical to come out with like 23 double re- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> double album. <Yeah. laughs> so we, wrote, we brought it down to 10 and left it at that. And it's 10 that I feel very strongly about and feel like really captures... Um, where I've been and where I'm going. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, uh, you alluded to this just before you were a, you were a model yeah. before this. Funny, for right? Lo- for a little while. <laughs> um, but there was a time in your life I've read where you actually kept this whole music thing, the songwriting, yeah. it all secret until yes. you were mid-20s. Yeah. I how mean, how yeah. did you manage to do that? Um, I think I, again, being my biggest critic, I think there was just a moment of, admittedly, like insecurity of being anything slash anything else, you know? And I do think in 2017, just looking out into the world, there's a lot of things a lot of people can be. And I I don't know, maybe it's age as well. I sort of learned to take myself a lot less seriously and just do the things that I enjoy doing and try my best to do them as good as I can but yeah you know it it took me it took me a minute but I'm glad I finally did it (laughs) now I've also heard or read that you first got on stage in front of people um performing here in New York City is that true as part of this cabaret oh yeah it was a part of um for over 10 years the Citizens Band Cabaret and we performed all over New York City and those you know they all sort of really encouraged me to get on with writing my own songs and performing them but being with them for years that was just a great schooling in a way I mean you're around incredible musicians great performers getting to sing songs I wrote a couple of songs that we performed in the cabaret and that was sort of the the you know genesis of me becoming my own songwriter I think again I've been writing songs for as long as I can remember Uh, I lived in the East Village for god knows how long and had a like a little four track that I'd record stuff on but again it You know, I tend to try these days not to overthink why I didn't make more records sooner because everything seems to have its mo, you know, its reason for things. So I'm, I may have not made double roses if I started making music sooner. So it all, it all sort of ends up the way it ends up. (laughs) Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Um, You're doing these shows this week. I want to talk about. You played Third Man Records in uh, Nashville, Um, and then you're going to be playing in Brooklyn here. Yes, at Rough Trade. Yeah. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that show. I know you mentioned it before. Well, but I'm a massive Rough Trade fan anyway. I mean, that's good, like the stuff of my childhood. I mean, it was Rough Trade and 4AD. I would sort of obsessively go, remember Kim's video? Are you too young for Kim's video? I don't remember You're Kim's too video. Young for but Kim's video. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I used to live in the East Village, and okay. there was an amazing record store called Kim's Video, and they had the best movies, the best records, the best pretty much everything. Yeah. And big music snobs they were. So I learned my music snobbery from them. And they would always have the rough trade section in the store and the, you know, 4AD and all that stuff, all the labels that I was a big fan of. So, you know, rough trade, they're, you know, pioneers of sort of great indie and alternative music. So I'm very happy to play there. Absolutely. And I'm playing there in London as well. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, anybody watching right now in the New York City area or maybe even Brooklyn specifically, is that, um, how do you gain access to that show tomorrow night? Is it? Probably a good question. Look on my website. <laughs> yeah, I can buy out. tickets, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope. <laughs> right on. Um, Look on my website. There you go. And Rough Trade's website probably too. I'm not sure. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So either of those. Yeah. Now, it, I know it's, it's hard to think past midnight tonight with the record coming out, but uh, what else do you have looking forward to in 2017? I know you mentioned some festivals. There's, yeah, I'm going to be in Europe quite a bit. There's a bunch of summer festivals, Latitude. I can never pronounce the Denmark one. Rockskilda, Rockskilda. Rock skilled. There you go. Also on the website. Also on my website. Exactly. Um, Austin City Limits. Um, nice. The Pilgrimage Festival, which is in Nashville, so that makes life great because I yeah. can do something at home for once. And yeah, just sort of building up slowly and surely to try and get on the road and tour more. Because I mean, obviously, I really love. It's one thing, sort of holding yourself up in your house, writing your songs, but it's a whole. It brings a whole other life to the songs 
performing them. And at Rough Trade, actually, on at Third Man, I had the opportunity to perform with a full band. I've got a harp player. I've got Ooh. keyboards. we got, you know, saxophone. we got all kinds of crazy instruments. So, you know, this setup, like breaking it down, really sort of brings it back to the... Um, how I wrote the songs originally, but when you get a full band as well, it's a whole other experience. So I've been really playing around with both sides, like stripping it down completely and then just going all at it, which will tomorrow night will definitely be a bit of a that psychedelic awesome. moment, I hope. <laughs> Absolutely. You really get to know a record playing it live. Yeah, you do. And you get to know it differently than even how you wrote it. That's the fascinating thing about that's why you have to perform live, ultimately. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Karen, thank you so much <laughs> thank for stopping you. by. Thank you very much. The songs sound amazing. The record sounds amazing, too. They let me listen to it just before. Oh, I feel, really? Yeah, I feel Fantastic. extra special. Um, but it comes out at midnight, so be sure it to does. check it out online, streaming, wherever it's available. And uh, thank you so much stuff. for taking thank the time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs>